All right, guys, this is the next video. Uh, this is about layers. It is very important that we know how to layer our marches. I am going to be showing you here with my range march. I also have a siege and, and mounted march, but they work pretty much the same. What you need to learn is that, uh, first of all, obviously, you want to ch uh, choose the right generals. These are my range generals here. You want to unlink or deselect this subordinate city uh, option because once you, you decide to attack, you can quickly select them if you want to. But it's easier just not to have them there. And in here, you would have to start at the very bottom. Layers means just putting troops on every single tier that you have and every single level. As you can see here, all my march has a hundred in here. hundred troops of every single tier, uh, layers. Why a hundred? Uh, it is not a rule. You can put a thousand if you like, or you can put uh, 666, whatever makes you happy. You know, I've seen obviously bigger players are going to even have layers of 50,000 or so, but it is it is what it is. It, all we know is that you need to have layers. They have to exist. The number that you send is just irrelevant. We don't see a massive difference. But I know that if I use a slightly smaller number, because I used to send a thousand, so I reduce it to a hundred, because that means I get a little bit less wounded on my lower tiers. And I get to send a little bit more on my higher tiers. I get to send a bit more tier 14, which I do like. That means I can cause a little bit more damage. But as I said, the important thing is that these layers have to exist. So once you create the layers, you want to go ahead and check your higher three tiers. In my case, that would be tier 12, tier 13, and tier 14. For the range march, we know that the tier 12 are, are very, very important. So that is why I'm heavy here. I have a lot more tier 12s than tier 13s and tier 14s. Okay. There are no specific rules. Some people say, you know, you need to send 60% tier 12s, 25% uh, tier 13s and 30% and I don't know. Just do the math and uh, send whatever you think is right. These numbers do not have to be a specific. They don't have to be precisely uh, a certain amount. Just notice that tier 12 has to be uh, heavier. You have to have more tier 12 because they do cause a lot of damage and they are actually cheaper to heal. So tier 12 for range makes a lot of sense. Uh, when it comes to siege, it might be different, but that is for another video. So let's just continue on the range. Uh, whenever you're creating these layers, make sure that you have some, you have some space here. You have a cushion of troops here. I could send more tier 14s or I could send more tier 13s and fill up my march. But I always leave a little space here, especially on the tiers. As you can see, all the tiers have enough troops. I have way more troops here that I could be using, but I, I have this space simply because after you hit a player, then your troops are going to get wounded, are, are going to become deserters, or maybe they're going to even get killed. And that means that these numbers will disappear. Let's say in this example, I actually sent all my tier 14s and I hit a player and I no longer have 388,622 troops available. I have a, a little bit less. What the system is going to do, the system is going to try to fill the march with something else. So it might actually take horses. So next time I hit someone, I am not going to be hitting them with archers, but with archers and some horses. And I don't want that because I know my horses are going to get wounded. It's no longer a range march. It becomes a slightly mixed march. So in order to prevent that, just have a cushion of troops. So if these ones get wounded, for the next time I attack, I am going to have enough to, to just to grab and fill the march. Because if you watch here, this is my march size. And I am telling the system I want to have a full march. And the system is going to fill it every single time. So if I get wounded, the system is going to grab something else and going to be replaced. Keep that in mind. In this case, uh, the last thing is uh, you can see that this is my range march. And I keep it pretty much 99% range and just only 1% in layers. Some players like to send some horses in order to protect their archers. But I, I noticed that 
when I do that, I get a lot of wounded from those horses because, well, horses love to get wounded, and I don't, I don't have uh, enough range to cause serious damage. So you can play with that. You can send some horses in order to protect the archers, but like I said, I haven't seen a, a, a positive difference there. All you need to remember as well is the rock, paper, scissors of the game, which means archers will kill horses and horses will kill ground. Okay, so you can always just scout the player, see what that player has inside and send the proper march to that. So that is how you create the layers. It is the same thing like I said for other ones, this is the siege one. My numbers are different because I actually went heavy on tier 12s and I have some tier 14s and not enough tier 11. Some players use a lot of tier 11 when it comes to siege because they do like the numbers that tier 11 offer. I like tier 12s, that is my call. And in here, this is my mounted march. Again, same layers as you can see, a hundred. But I go heavier on the horses. Oh, this actually this march is not created yet. We can create it right now. And as you can see, I don't have a lot of a tier 12 horses. Look. So I only use layers here. I use tier 11 because it's what I have. And I don't use all of them. I use a little bit less so I can create that cushion. Then let's go with the tier 14 horses. Again, I don't use everything to create that cushion and I fill it up with tier 13s. So tier 13s are pretty much the bulk. You can use tier 12s which are very powerful as you know but I don't have them so I don't use them. And then just like that I've created this march. Go ahead save it and this would be your mountain march obviously with the right channels. There's another video coming for general, so just don't hesitate to ask about it. There's a lot of options there. And the, the very last thing that I wanted to show you is that you can create a march, uh, uh, a random or more of a generic march. Just choose any general you want. It doesn't have to be, you can, it can be a gender. And then in here, you want to create all the layers. No, I mean, I'm not gonna be doing it because it would take forever, but let's imagine you would actually put all the layers here you know all the way up a hundred on every single layer and that's it then you go ahead and save this march as whatever march you want this will allow you to quickly have layers at your disposal that is very helpful in case you don't have enough preset slots for all your marches maybe you don't have enough for siege, ra uh, siege range mounted and, and ground Maybe you only have three slots here. So creating this generic one will help you a lot because you can come here quickly, choose your generals. In this case, let's choose the range one. I would put my generals in there and then just go go and add the, the troops that I want. I already know that in that case, I would actually send some tier 12 shooters. Not all of them, but a bit less. Tier 13. Again, not all of them, but a bit less, and tier 14. And just like that, I can just hit the player and I have a range march. I can go back and do exactly the same thing by replacing the generals and use a mounted march or use a siege march and use whatever you want. So this would be a random, more, more of a generic march that would allow you to just change slightly quicker than just having to create the layers every single time that you hit the player, which is just not viable. It will take you forever. So that is the, the, the video for layers. If you have any questions about it, just comment and let me know. And okay, let's move on to the next video now.